2022 has been absolutely bonkers, guys. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what the best gear is I've acquired throughout the year. So for now, sit back, relax, and let's get it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Everyday Minimalist. My name is Brandon and sorry guys, I'm a little bit sick. So if you hear some congestion, it's totally Balin's fault. But I'm gonna go ahead and just push through this video because I really wanted to show you guys kind of like a roundup video of all of my most favorite gear in 2022. In front of me, I've got a pouch, pen, pry bar, multi-tool, and then a few knives. Let's just dive right into it and show you my most favorite pouch launched in 2022. And that is gonna be the Data Crew What A Slider. I've already done a full review on this pouch so if you're interested in watching that after this video, a link will be in the description. This pouch goes for about 60 bucks, and the reason why I chose this is because it's better than any of the other pouches that I've reviewed. Whether it be the Mighty Pouch Plus in all of its variants, or even the Notorious AGP, this one is still the king. It's got the best build quality out of any of those pouches, and I absolutely adore this thing. It's really nice and thick, so you can jam-pack a ton of gear in here. And then when you go to open it up, it has one unique feature that no other pouch has, and that's going to be interior hooking and loop. That way you can kind of customize it with your own ranger eyes. On top of that, I think this is the only EDC pouch that has this weather guard built into the zipper, which I find is very thoughtful, especially if you're going to be jam packing this thing with a bunch of expensive gear. The What a Slider is just an amazing pouch. And for all of you guys that are kind of getting into the game, this thing is probably the one that you're going to want to go for. Next up, let's talk about my most favorite pen launched in 2022. And that's going to be the Big Idea Designs Fountain Pen. Mine so happens to be in Zirconia and this pen is just on a different level. In terms of writing performance, this thing is just amazing. It probably produces the best black ink out of any pen that I own. The zirconium is also a really nice touch because it just makes it look really nice and blacked out. And I dig the overall size of this thing. It feels really nice in the hand ergonomically. And for some reason, I always gravitate to this pen when I'm taking down notes, especially at my desk. Huge shout out to Big Idea Design for making such an amazing product. After that is gonna be my pry bar pick of the year. And that is the Big Idea Design Thai pry bar. Man, I said pry bar way too many times there, but this is a really good one just because of the overall size. I feel like a lot of the pry bars that I have are going to be a little bit smaller. And for quick reference, here is the Big Idea Designs Thai pry bar and next to the TMP Thai breaker. And you can just see it's a little bit longer. I'm guessing like half of an inch and that half of an inch makes a big difference when you go to pry things. On top of that, I really enjoy this deep carry pocket clip. It slides right into the pants without any problem problems and kind of makes it so that it doesn't just jingle around your pockets. The Thai pry bar also does have this built in fidget mechanism. So if you do get bored and you just want to fidget with something, you can easily pull this out of your pocket and start fidgeting with it. The design of this pry bar is very unique. It is still pretty new in the collection about two months, but I've been carrying it every day and I've been enjoying every second of it. Good job again to Big Idea Designs. This is an amazing little piece. Before we dive any deeper in this video, let's give a quick word for today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by House of Blades, a premier knife dealer located in Fort Worth, Texas. House of Blades is the one-stop shop if you're looking for really high-end knives, budget knives, multi-tools, water bottles, you name it, and they will probably have it. The reason why I love the House of Blades is because of all their different brand offerings. They stock Benchmade, Microtech, Spyderco, ZT, Kershaw, Civivi knives, Yeti, just to name a few. They also offer a really cool laser engraving service. So if you're someone that wants to have a unique knife that's really personal to you, all you got to do is send over your files and they will engrave it straight onto the blade. If you're interested in purchasing a new knife from House of Blades, make sure you go to the link in the description below and use code EDM for 10% off your entire order. Thank you so much to House of Blades for sponsoring this content. Let's get back to the video. So let's talk about multi-tools and my pick for 2022, and that's going to be the SOG Power Pint. Now I know this tool has been out on the market for a long time now, but I just recently acquired this maybe a few months ago and I've been absolutely adoring it. The reason being is because of the overall size. Again, this thing is very pocketable or I can easily slap it into a pouch. It's got a ton of functionality in terms of the tools. This thing has a built-in bit driver. You've got needle nose pliers, wire cutters. It's got a ruler built into it, blades, can openers, and just a bunch of functionality. This thing has saved me a couple handful of times when I was in a pinch and I needed a set of pliers. And with 
with it being 50 bucks, that is an amazing price for this little tool. You can also open this thing up like a butterfly knife, which is really fun to kind of show off if you've got some friends around you. And if you don't already own a SOG power pie, I would really suggest that you grab one of these, whether you're carrying it every day or putting it in your car and your coffee table, whatever it might be. So I saved the best for last and we've got four different knives on the table. It's gonna be ranging anywhere from budget knife of the year, a mid-grade knife of the year, production knife of the year, and then kind of like the custom range. I don't know if I can count this one as a custom, but the last one is pretty much knife of the year for me. Let's show you budget knife of the year first, and that is gonna be none other than the NAF Slander. This knife was designed by my buddy, Ben Peterson. He's here in Utah as well. And the reason why I picked the Lander as budget knife of the year is because of its custom ability. Ben actually designed this knife to be very open source. So what that means is if you have like a 3D printer or you want to make a custom scale, he has all the 3D files available. So that way, if you want to print it out, you can print it out and then really customize this knife. Next to that, this knife does have a recessed deep carry pocket clip. You don't really see that in budget knives. And it's just really surprising to see a knife that's around 50 to 60 bucks have that feature. The Lander is also a really non-threatening knife. So if you need to pull this out in a sticky situation and there's a bunch of people around you, it's not threatening. It doesn't look like you're gonna stab someone with it. It's more so of an EDC user type of knife. This is a liner lock knife and it has an amazing action just straight out of the box. So budget knife of the year, the NAFS Lander. Now let's talk about the mid-grade knife of the year and that is gonna be the Kaiser Drop Bear. Now I don't have a full review on this specific knife yet, but guys, this is an amazing knife for its value. I believe this thing goes for about 120 bucks off of Amazon and the the reason why it's so good is because it's in the Axis Lock family. They specifically call it the Clutch Lock, but it's a knife that really does compete against like the Benchmade Bug Out and the Hogue Deca. The thing about this knife is it has aluminum scale, so it feels a lot more robust than the Hogue Deca or the Bug Out, and it comes in at about $10 to $15 less. I also really like this drop point blade. It's got some really decent jimping, and what's really, really special about this knife is the Clutch Lock mechanism. It's really unique from any other models out there because you can adjust the tension of this lock bar. Basically, if you wanted to make this thing a little bit more stiff and have a stronger detent, you can just adjust the Omega Springs inside the drop bear. This thing features 154 CM blade steel, which is actually really decent if you want to sharpen it. This thing also came with a bunch of extra hardware and screws, so just in case you take this thing apart and then you lose some screws, you've got some backup options as well as backup Omega Springs. That in of itself is just really cool that a knife company is just kind of pushing you towards to taking it apart and maintaining it, learning what the knife is all about. I really like the thought that Kaiser put into this knife and it's definitely going to be worth your money. Trust me on that one. So the next couple knives on the list are going to be a little bit harder to get a hold of. I, I should probably say really hard to get a hold of, but the first one is going to be the Protec Mordax. This is going to be a higher end production knife made in the USA. If you guys don't know what the Mordax is, it's been around for quite a long time now, but I just recently got one at Blade Show West in October. So this counts as a 2022 knife of the year pick. This one is the Magna Cut version with this all black aesthetic. And if you guys have been watching my channel for a long time now, you'll know that the Protec Malibu was pretty much in my top five knives of all time. Now, the thing is, I think the Protec Mordax kind of dethroned the Malibu. Like, don't get me wrong. I still absolutely adore the Malibu and it's still in my top 10 knives of all time, but I believe the Mordax is better than the Malibu. Let me tell you why. This thing has a really cool drop point blade. It's going to be a little bit larger than the Malibu. However, the increased blade size just makes this thing an absolute guillotine. So in terms of fidget friendliness, I mean, it's still a flipper with a button lock, but it feels a lot more robust in the hand. The next thing I really like about the Mordax is how minimalistic it is. Protect does a really good job in making a minimalist type of knives. This one just looks really clean aesthetically, and it's also really nice in terms of ergonomics. Just check out this finger choil that they put in. It's a very nice large one, so you can really choke up and get into those more precise cuts. And yeah, the Mordax is just crazy. It is gonna be a little bit harder to get, so you guys might wanna follow Protec on their Instagram stories. They'll usually announce when dealers are dropping the knife itself. And the Mordax is my pick for knife of the year at $250. So this last knife is a very hard one to get from Brian Winters, and that is gonna be none other than the Winter Blade Co. Factor. This knife is on a completely different level, and it's because it's so innovative. This thing is operating off of magnets has that signature ting noise that it creates when it goes to deploy and is probably one of the most fidget friendly type of knives out there, especially if you really like 
haptic feedback. I've yet to do a full review on the factor just because I'm scared to take it apart. Now I do know that there's a bunch of other knife YouTubers that have taken this thing apart, but I feel like if I do disassemble it, it's gonna ruin that like really awe factor for me just because of how interesting it is. It's got a bunch of magnets built into it. Like I said before, you've got an M390 blade that's extremely sharp, a titanium scale here on the front and then carbon fiber on the back. And attached to that carbon fiber scale is gonna be a milled out titanium clip, which has the perfect tension. Guys, I know the factor is an absolutely adored knife in the entire EDC knife community. If I were to pick out the best knife of the year, that's gonna be the Winter Blade Co. Factor. I'm not sure when the first batch released, it might've been 2021, but this is my most favorite knife that I've personally acquired. This knife is literally a piece of history in knife innovation. But yeah, if you guys can get your hands on one, I would 120,000% suggest that you pick one up. But there you guys have it, my most favorite gear that I've acquired in 2022. I hope you enjoyed this content and I guess I'll have to catch you on the next one. Peace out.